question. No, a question about common. There's yeah. psychological studies that show couples who are very close share more things that they don't like mutually, they don't like the same things, than what they like. Okay, so, so to repeat that, uh, in case you didn't hear it, the psychological study that shows that um, you know it's better for couples to share things that they hate, you know, they feel closer together <laughs> than, than to share things which they do indeed love. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully I can articulate this well enough, but <laughs> you know, the self, the notion of the self is such an ancient topic, but with virtual spaces and alternate reality and virtual games, I, I guess I see it more with alternate realities where there's a convergence of a virtual self and a physical self, but I guess I would like to hear what you both think of that because I think who I am online, it's not too terribly different, but I am going to filter what I expose to the rest of the world. So I'm just kind of wondering what you think of that idea so it's a of a virtual and a, yeah. This is a really good question, and the question really is having to do with the self. And specifically, the versions of the self, which are kind of your virtual self and then your actual self. And it seems like in both of our projects, there's a, a melding of those two or a collision of them. Um, I think it's an old one. So we go first. Yeah, I guess we're always projecting a part of ourselves in different situations and, and changing what we think that projection is. Uh, it, it is really interesting. Um, and there's a lot of studies that I don't have fully in my head right now about um, avatars and how much of one's self-image and how much of one's image of other people get uh, passed through avatars, which of course you know look nothing like the people necessarily, um, don't move like the people necessarily, and so forth. But nevertheless, one really takes on uh, that sense of another person is there, and I th it's something that we. S are trying to capture with Stream Jam. We certainly have seen that very powerfully in virtual worlds that um, something about just having the form of another human, even just there virtually, everybody knows, you know, those aren't the people, but um, you feel like you're experiencing something with other people, even though you're only doing that to exactly the same extent as when you watch a popular television show, you know, there's, or a sporting event, say, on television, you know there's millions of other people watching the same thing at the same time. Um, but there is something about seeing another human form in addition to the interactions you can have online. But but just just that um, there uh, there was you know a study that I think going on uh, going online and um, acting as an avatar that you find uh, to be really uh, you know, sexually appealing or sexy in some way or good looking uh, is will cause you to behave more confidently throughout the rest of your entire day. Uh, I saw that one come out, yeah. So there's, you know, we're so ingrained just to, just to, our so much of our brains about people and um, are about people and how we interact with people, how we interpret people, that um, doing that even in very artificial ways uh, you know, really causes us to, to cognate a lot. Uh, there's something else I was thinking about this. Uh, you know, your, your question really about the self really uh, goes exactly to the, kind of the heart of my work and the opportunity that I see. Um, it, I, I spoke a little bit about alternate reality games at the Games for Change conference, and, uh, and, and I said that I, I felt that they were in the position that uh, movies were in the year 1917. You know, there have been some clumsy attempts and enough uh, uh, you know, has been shot and essentially been looked at that we can tell that there's something ahead, but we really don't even know kind of what the form is that it's going to go to. But, but it's, it's hard to communicate, um, you know, I'm going to fumble for, for words now, but when you're playing an alternate reality game, you start with just yourself where you are. Let's, let's say World Without Oil is my most familiar example. You know, you understand that there's an oil crisis going on, and the, the game is asking you, how is your life changing as a result of the oil crisis, which is now happening? Well, you know, you, you just start from where you are, and you think about the oil that you use or whatever. But, but pretty soon you start to kind of develop a, another version of yourself uh, as you're playing the game. And I don't know if I'm explaining this well, but you, you know, you kind of write about this yourself in a fictitious way, right? And so, 
you know, you go to work, uh, you get up in the morning, you drive to work, you come back home, uh, you drive back home, and then you get online, and online you say, I rode my bicycle to work today because of the oil crisis. You know, and then you do this a bit, and, and then you talk, you know, in some other posting, you talk about in the oil crisis that you take the train more or whatever. Well, what happens is, at some point in time, you're looking at that fictitious version of yourself, and you're liking it better than the version, you know, of you actually driving to work. And so people actually did just park their cars, and they did try driving to work, and they explained it to themselves by saying, "Well, I, I want my." Post things in World Without Oil to seem more real. And so I'm actually going to go through the experience so it seems more authentic. Um, or they said, well, I'm going to plant a garden out in my backyard um, you know, because I said I was going to do it. And that way I could take a picture of it and, and, and show everyone and that sort of thing. But you know, that it goes much deeper than that, right? I mean, it's about really the process by which we make any change in our lives. You begin to imagine yourself as a different person, or, you know, I mean, you yourself going in a different path or taking an action. And so here, you're free to imagine it because it's all just what if, you know? I mean, you can just stop playing this game at any time. You know, you can just go, oh, this is stupid, I'm busy, whatever. You have nothing at stake, but yet you create, you begin to invest yourself in this sort of alternative version. And so, you know, the, the games that I'm looking for are the games that ask really interesting questions about your, you know, to your existing self that's going to create that virtual self that's going to split off and go in some other direction. And that's why people are interested in the games that I do, is because they see at the end of the game there are people who are saying, I changed my life because of this game. I thought this was the best thing ever. It was just this really rich, rich experience for me. You know? And, and of course, that's kind of all out of proportion to anything that I did, you know, other than create that, you know, energy uh, kind of going forward, kind of create that game structure, and then let them do their own change to themselves, you know, in a way which really makes sense for themselves. <laughs>